welcome back to Shifting to Solids. Today we're going to be talking about the sweep tool in uh, Onshape. So if we come up here to the top, you will see our sweep feature lives next to Extrude and Revolve. So if we hover over it, unfortunately there is no shortcut key, but uh, it says to create, add to, subtract from, or intersect parts and surfaces by sweeping sketch regions, planar faces, lines, or curves along a path. Or thin parts by sweeping sketch regions, planar faces, lines, or curves along a path. Add optional profile control by orientation, lock faces, or lock direction. So um, a lot of stuff there. Basically what you're doing, the tool is called sweep, right? So imagine you're using a broom um, and you have that a whole shop full of dirt or sawdust, right? And the whole floor is covered. If I take my broom and I sweep it across the floor, I'm going to leave some sort of path, right? If I go straight, if I curve through. So what we're going to do is we're going to set some path up. And then we're going to take a shape like our broom and we're going to have it follow that path. So first, like always, we need to start with a sketch. So we're going to click that top plane and hold down shift and S, uh, letter N to normalize and P to hide that plane. So if we zoom in get a little closer to our um, origin, easiest way to show how to do the sweep feature um, is by making a paper clip. So what we're going to do, actually, we're going to be working in two planes today um, and three in our advanced uh, exercise we'll do towards the end. But the first thing we're going to do is start by drawing a line vertically from the origin. And we're going to make that one five inches. So we'll go five enter. Now, some of you guys don't know about this feature, but this feature here, um, if I, some of you have discovered it on accident, you touch your point here and it turns into an arc. Uh, I believe it's called the line arc line feature. It's a SolidWorks deal, um, but essentially it'll turn into an arc. So I don't have to come up and, and press that arc after that. So I can go back and it'll turn back to a line, back to an arc. So what we're gonna do is go off to the side and we're gonna give that a radius of one. Come back down here and we'll just line up with our five inch line, but turn it back into an arc. And we'll give ourselves a radius of 0.75. From there, I'm going to go straight up. And I'm going to go up 4.5. From there, I'm going to give myself a arc of 0.5. And then from there, I'm going to go down 3 inches on my drawing. So what I'm going to end up having, let's fix that. Those need to be horizontal. There we go. I'll get the shape of a paper clip. Now I'm going to go ahead and accept that sketch. Remember letter P turns those planes on. So I'm going to come down here this way. My paper clip is laying on my top plane. So what we need to do now though is give it some thickness, right? There's nothing for me to extrude because there's no solid polygon. All I did was draw lines. So what we need to do now is we're going to click the front plane and we're going to start a sketch on that front plane. Okay. So now if we hide it, hide those planes, you'll see that I'm drawing where my origin was at. Um, you don't always have to use this using the origin. It just seems to be the easiest way. And now I'm going to draw a center point circle based off of that origin. And that needs to be 0.5 in diameter. So this is going to be a pretty big, thick paper clip. But if you look, what we're going to do is we're going to take that shape and extrude it. But instead of extruding it in one direction, it's going to follow my whole path. So it's cool. I don't have to go in and round corners. I don't have to uh, then go add fillets. This is just going to do what I ask it to do. So I'm done with that sketch. So we'll go ahead and click our sweep uh, feature. Now it's going to ask me, what do you want to do? I need a face and sketch region to sweep. So we're going to click our face because that's our only face is that circle that we made. Now our sweep path is going to be the path that we made. So I can go through and start clicking all of my pieces. And you'll see that it will follow that path. Now what the issue we're running into 
is that it's overlapping. So when you're planning out your geometry, if it turns red like this, I tell my students all the time, red uh, means you did something wrong, right? So no big deal. Let's go back to our sketch. And instead of making it 0.5, let's make it 0.25, okay? Um, I try to plan some some hiccups into all of our drawings so you can see what they like, what what they're like, um, and how to react to it versus figuring it out and be like, I've never done this before. So now if we go back to our sweep, you'll see that there's no problem because that geometry is smaller and it's not encroaching on any other geometry that exists. Okay. So you'll see now I have my nice um, 3D shape of a paper clip. Now just like everything, these sliders down here at the bottom will show you the transparency. Um, and it'll be, sometimes it's easier to see uh, the lines in some drawings. Sometimes there's so much stuff going on, it's kind of hard to see what's there and what's not. So if you need to slide that slider, that'll get you there. But essentially, we now have a paper clip. Okay. Um, if we go back to the sweep feature, again, if we were to be adding this to another existing part, maybe I had um, a plate and then this was going to pop up over it. Um, maybe I was going to remove a inset. Um, I could do something along those lines and have it add, remove, or intersect, just like we did before. Uh, surface and thin. Uh, for the basic stuff, we're not going to get too into it. So we'll um, we'll save that one for the, like, the more advanced features in this. Um, everything I've done so far, we've always done solid new add remove or intersect and honestly it's add and remove are pretty much where you're gonna stay at so that's how you use the sweep tool with a basic uh project in mind so just making a small little paper clip um for our next one uh i actually drew up this flanged pipe here um and we are going to recreate this so i will show you step by step how i kind of made this um, this is something real world, uh, practical. I know some people are asking for, um, some different actual practice drawings instead of just drawing random lines. Like what could I use this for? Right. Um, so this is how you could make this flanged pipe. All so right. if we so look from here, what we're going to do is need to start a new part studio. So we'll go to the plus sign in the bottom left corner, create part studio. Um, and we're going to actually start with the top plate of the flange. So let's start on the top view. So shift s to start a sketch n to normalize and p to hide those planes and remember p hides those planes and brings them back so um when you start doing things in 3d it's very important that you know where you're going going back and forth and there's times where you need those different planes and sometimes like today we're actually going to draw our own plane uh, to kind of help facilitate uh, this drawing so for starters from the top view we're going to draw a circle from the center point that needs to be uh, three inches in diameter. We're also going to draw a circle for our outside that needs to be six inches in diameter. And we're going to draw a circle that needs to be 3.5. So three solid circles, one at three, one at six, and one at three and a half. So draw all three of those. Now we're going to draw another circle, but this one's going to be a construction line circle, and it's going to be a place for our um, our bolt holes to go along. So we're going to click that center of our origin, and this one is actually going to be 4.75, and it's going to be a construction circle. So how do I go from construction to regular? You're going to press that Q uh, button, or you can click up here on the toolbar. Once I'm done with that, I need to draw another circle and we're going to draw four of them. One, two, three, and four. Okay. Um, one thing to do here, obviously they're not all the same size, but they need to be. I can make those 0.75. But the easy way to do this is to use that center point rectangle as a construction rectangle, and we're going to draw a circle, or a rectangle, sorry, that touches, but it needs to be 3.5 from top to bottom, okay? So when we do that, 
from those circles, now I can, all of those cor corner points, I can now put my circles on those corner points, okay? Those all need to be point, uh, 0.75. So I'm gonna make the last one 0.75. And if you remember back to our video about constraints, if I click all four of these circles, only one of them is defined with a dimension. So if I press the letter E for equals, they will now all equal each other. So if I ever were to go in the future and change that dimension to a half inch, or I was to change it to a, uh, you know, five eighths or whatever, it's going to match and it's going to be where I need it to be. So this is our basic geometry for our flange plate. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to extrude it. But on shape always decides it's, it thinks it's smarter than us. We're going to press the space bar and get rid of the selection it has. So we need to go through and pick what we need it to have. On shape defaulted to have us have this plate like this, which is fine. But we need it to pick that inside piece as well. Otherwise, when we do our pipe, it's going to not give you the right geometry you need. So for this, we said it's going to be a plate thickness of 0.5. So we'll say uh, OK. And we will click the green check mark. If I turn my planes back on, you will see that I'm existing right on the top of that front plane. Or that top plane, I'm sorry. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna take that sketch, and if I just click the sketch to where it turns blue and I right click and click copy sketch, I am then gonna make a new plane. So if I click the front plane and I click this version over here, this tool over here, we haven't done this yet, but this is something you'll learn. Uh, it's called plane. So if I click that plane, it'll allow me to make my own plane at a specific distance. So for our case, what we need is we need this to be 4.5 inches away from my front plane. And so now we'll say, okay. And so instead of drawing on my front plane, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw on this uh, plane number one that we just made. So if I press Shift and S to start a sketch, you'll see this outer rectangle that says sketch two doesn't exist on my front plane. It exists on my plane number one. So we'll go ahead and normalize that view, hide those planes now that we're in the right spot. And then I'm going to press control V. And now I have that geometry that I made. Okay. Now we need to move our circle uh, and all our geometry from our center point to our origin. We're going to line it up to where it's, it's perfectly aligned. However, we need to come here and slide down and you'll see it starts to give me a slider um, with a text box. So we need this to be 4.5. However, if I, if I type 4.5 right now, that's a positive number. It's gonna shoot up positive, it's gonna go high. What we want it to do is go down the other way. So I just type in negative 4.5 and it will slide down in the direction that I need it to go, okay? Could I have drawn this whole circle again? Absolutely, but time is money and we wanna get this stuff done. So we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna extrude. This time, however, I'm gonna extrude out the other way. So we're gonna click here and on shape auto went that way. So we wanna go 0.5 and you'll see from the right side view, I now have what it looked like on our uh, print that you have. If you have the printout, you can see that and we'll say okay. So from here, I now have two flanges that work perfect, but how are they gonna tie together? Now this is where that sweep feature comes in. So turn our planes back on, and now this time I need to draw on this right plane because that is gonna be centralized to the two. So we're gonna draw a sketch, shift S, and we're gonna normalize to those two. Might help to turn on your sketches so you can see the geometry. Yes, up here I know we have the origin, but over here we won't have one. So turning that sketch on, it'll help you align a lot better. What we need to do is do a three-point circle is the easiest way I found to do this. You could do arcs, but then you end up clicking the wrong thing, um, trying to do a radius and then turn it, it's a little harder. So we're gonna do three-point circle. I know I need it to touch here on my origin. 
but I know I need it to touch here on my center point of my other flange. Now I need to just go out and place this however big I need that, that curve to be. So if I just click out here, now I give it that measurement of nine because the radius of our circle needs to be 4.5. So it's gonna give me a diameter of nine. Click nine, enter, escape to drop that tool and letter M will come through and trim up to where I needed that geometry. So now if I press the letter P to hide all those planes, green check mark to confirm my sketch, we'll come over here into sweep and it's gonna ask me faces and sketches to sweep. Well, this time I need to pick this outer flange right here. Okay, I could pick it off of either one. I could go from the top or the bottom. Just make sure you only pick one. And then now it's turning red and it's saying, okay, well, what do you want? What sweep path? So I'm gonna click this, okay? Notice how I am in new right now. And I get this weird, so if I said, okay, I'm gonna get three parts, cool. If you're using this as a welding project and maybe you're gonna cut these flanges out and you have an adapter like this or you're making a tubing bender, whatever, um, you have your three parts. So I can go shut off, you know, I can use this as one. Let me shut these sketches off because we are done with those. So I could have this ready to go um, and have just my pipe. I could look at just my flanges. Um, I could look at the three of them together, but let's say this was a machined part and you were casting this thing. How would I change that? So this is where I would go back to sweep. Um, instead of new, I would check add. Um, and it turns red. And the reason it's going to turn red is because you'll see down here, it says merge scope. So the easy one is if you're doing a bunch of stuff and they all have to touch each other and be one thing, just click merge with all. Super easy. Um, however, you can go in and click the part. So if you click merge, and you click merge with part one and merge with part two, you'll see it changes. Um, maybe I only want it to merge with part one and I wanna have a part that's prefabbed, but then a part that gets welded on for whatever reason. You could do that as well. But for our argument today, we'll go ahead and click both. Or like I said, just click merge with all, very simple. And now we have a nice three-dimensional part that was drawn with very, very easy, simple geometry using that sweep feature. So um, hopefully this is helping you guys out. I know some people are asking for some stuff more uh, project based and more to the like very specific. Now, somebody was asking about some um, some parts for some model airplanes. Um, are we leaning more towards 3D printing? Are we leaning more towards actually, you know, making some jigs and then, I don't know, casting them or however else I don't, <laughs> Know how else you'd go about doing it um, but if there's certain things that you want be super descriptive in the comments uh, and let me know exactly what you need um, I don't know how to do everything but uh, I'm dumb enough I guess to try to figure it out and <laughs> I will uh, watch all the YouTube videos and try to make one for you guys so I know there's some cool things out there um, and when I first started learning how to do this stuff I did it with a uh, I was learning how to do stuff on a plasma table and I didn't even know half the stuff I was cutting out. My boss would bring me apart and say, cut this. I need 40 of them by Friday. Okay, cool. And then slowly I learned what they went to. So um, I believe you can do a lot of engineering and get a lot of drafting and stuff done without actually knowing what the part is, as long as you know how the, the tools in your drafting programs work. So uh, if you guys have any questions, ask me in the comments. Um, those of you guys that are reaching out, it's really awesome, especially you guys, you past students. I saw some of those comments and it, it's really cool seeing you guys after all these years um, jumping into stuff and, you know, chasing your passion. And I'm glad that I was able to help along the way. So take care uh, and I'll see you guys next week.